Hey guys, what's up? It's Biscuitboo Horror Reviews here, back with a review of a supernatural horror thriller revenge film uh, from Italy, directed by the Italian godfather of gore, Lucio Fulci. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Lucio Fulci, he is one of the most well-known Italian horror directors of all time. Most well-known for his, um, for his eras, uh, starting in, like, the early 70s with films like Don't Torture, Torture, Duckling, and Lizard in a Woman's Skin, where he did Jalo films, and they were, uh, not, not straight up horror, but they had horror elements. Then, in the late 70s and into the 80s and early 90s, he did a lot of splatter films and a lot of crazy zombie slasher gore films. And a lot of them hold up really well as, like, entertaining kind of semi-cheesy gore films. Some of them hold up very well as actual, as actually creepy, well-done, kind of atmospheric uh, horror films. Um, one of his best, and what, the one I believe is his best film, and uh, definitely his creepiest film, is uh, House by the Cemetery, which is a weird kind of zombie supernatural slasher film. Uh, but it's immensely surreal and very, very creepy. Uh, but the movie I'm talking about is Voices from the Dark, Voices from Beyond. Uh, this film is about a man who is killed, he's uh, poisoned, and the doctors and everybody say it was a hernia that killed him. And his spirit returns from the grave uh, and asks his daughter to help get revenge and find out who did this to him. Sounds like a good plot to a Fulci film. So this movie opens up with uh, a couple fucking in bed. And in the other room, you hear this kid crying for his mother. And the guy gets out of bed and fucking stabs the kid to death. <laughs> and that's the opening scene of this fucking movie. I'm not joking. And it is honestly, like, jarring and amazing, even by Lucio Fulci standards. Anyway... That sequence turned out to actually be, um, a dream. So, that was kind of just a little prologue to the film. Then we get the actual film itself, um, which has the, uh, father character, Giorgio. He's vomiting blood on his deathbed in the hospital, um, and they think that he's dying from some kind of hernia. Now, I'm no expert, and I just did a quick Google and read a very confusing article about it, but as far as I read, hernias don't cause vomiting blood. Only in certain occasions does it cause that. So, this film's inaccurate. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm mainly joking, but I did read an article that just made it more confusing. So, so the doctors still believe it's a hernia, even though, you know, they, they have to do an autopsy on him. And, yeah. So, anyway, he dies, and his wife is naturally, obviously, uh, very torn up about it. She's very sad about it. And at his funeral, a few of the people that, have, that he has wronged in his life show up at the funeral, and when they go to approach his corpse, they, every single one of them has a flashback to what he did to personally uh, kind of vex them, for, personally cross them and offend them. And... This group of people may or may not have had something to do with his death, and yeah, the, um, it goes places, and then his ghost starts talking to his daughter and says, you gotta find out who did this before my corpse completely rots away, even though he's only buried for a few days, and it would take, like, years and years for him to turn into bones, but alright. Uh, despite this movie being, like, a supernatural thriller, it is surprisingly gory. Now, that's not what I expected from this film, even if this is a Lucio Fulci film. I mean, I don't think I've personally seen a movie from him that didn't have at least a little bit of gore in it. I, I, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything except maybe Don't Torture a Duckling, and that had a couple scenes of, of some pretty grisly violence, but um, that one was kind of alright. Uh... But this movie is surprisingly gory. I kind of expected it to be a very kind of slow-paced, creepy, interesting, um, 
kind of supernatural revenge thriller horror film. And I, I got that, but they also just threw in gore for the fuck of it, because I guess that's what people wanted from Fulci. And I'm not going to sit here and complain and say, like, oh my god, I'm so disappointed that this wasn't a gore-free film, because it's a Lucio Fulci film, if it doesn't have gore in it, oh well, you know, whatever. But if it does, then hell yeah. So, so you know, the gore in this film, decently explicit, pretty well done. Uh, the dubbing, the acting, um, this film is dubbed, like a lot, dubbed in English, like a lot of Lucio Fulci films are. And I would say that this is a very average dub on it. Like, if you've seen any other Lucio Fulci film in dubbed in English, then you've pretty much seen the same level of, like, you know, acting as far as the dubbing goes, because it's about the same as it is in any other Lucio Fulci film. Uh, the film is kind of, the, the characters in the film are actually kind of interesting. The daughter is, is fairly likable, and the, uh, the wife of, of Giorgio, she's very interesting, but overall the characters aren't super fleshed out, but then again, this is, um, this is a Lucio Fulci film that's dubbed in English, and has needless, like, just pointless gore in it, because people want gore in Lucio Fulci films. So, I'm not gonna say that this is a film that absolutely needs to have fleshed out characters or good dubbing. Uh, all that being said, though, that while this, you know, while this movie is a little cheesy and you can't take it too seriously because of the, uh, kind of cheesy elements, and you can't care for the characters. This movie has a surprisingly decent number of scenes that are actually pretty atmospheric and dreamlike and creepy. There are a few sequences in the film that are very surreal. Um, some of them are dream sequences, some of them aren't. And these dream sequences and, like, weird scenes just are very well done. The music is very good. It has that kind of, like like washed out color to it it's very foggy and mysterious and I really dig it mm. now while those atmospheric scenes are in this film this film is nowhere near the level of atmosphere that like House by the Cemetery sits at everything from a technical standpoint in this film is, is fairly well done those surreal sequences are especially well done but overall, it's it's filmed all right. It's shot okay. The lighting's okay. The writing is okay. Not writing, but everything from a technical standpoint is okay. The gore in the film, as previously stated, is very well done um, and decently explicit. And I'll be honest, even though it, even though like I didn't expect any gore in this film, I feel like the gore definitely helped keep this film interesting and engaging because I feel like without it, this movie would have been a bit boring. That being said, the pacing in this film is a little problematic because while it isn't the slowest movie I've ever seen, it's no shot on tango, it's no empire, it's no melancholy dirt angle, but it's, it's definitely not fast paced. Um, there are quite, while I never really found myself getting bored watching the film, because the plot was kind of interesting, I've got to say that there are quite a few moments where the film really dragged on, and that really affected how much I was enjoying the film. Because, you know, if you take it for what it is, it's it's just kind of basic, like, low-level, low-tier Fulci. It isn't anything too impressive or amazing. Um... I will say the the ending is very anticlimactic. Like with a lot of Lucio Fulci films, there's always that there's always that amazing climax at the end, that amazing final murder where they find out where the killer is or something happens and it and it's just a mysterious creepy ending. Like the ending to The Beyond. I'm not going to spoil it, but if you've seen The Beyond, you know the the ending to it is like weird and surreal and like open to interpretation and it's very it's it's very good. It's a very cool ending. Because the film itself is weird and open to interpretation and all over the place. While this doesn't have that, it just kind of comes to an end and justice isn't really served at all. And that's very, very disappointing. 
On the gore meter from 1 to 10, 1 being something like Nosferatu, 10 being something like Peter Jackson's Brain Dead. Voices from Beyond sits at probably a 3, maybe a 4. This movie isn't super gory, it isn't anything um, that the average person hasn't seen already. Uh, this isn't even, you know, this isn't even like that gory, I don't even know where I'm going with this. It, it's just not as gory as uh, you would expect the average Lucio Fulci film to be. This film isn't anything amazing, in conclusion, um, but for what it is, it's okay. Voices from Beyond is very much low tier, very like really low tier Fulci, but still pretty enjoyable. And I would say I enjoyed this one. I would I enjoyed this one about as much as I enjoyed Manhattan Baby, which was another low tier Fulci film that is like um, Egyptian mythology combined with a little bit of House uh, by the Cemetery and a little bit of Poltergeist and set in Manhattan with, like, a, a closet opening and it being a portal to, like, fucking Egypt. It's a little... That one's wild and very interesting. And that one has the gore and some and definitely better atmosphere um, and pacing than this film. It's a solid late Fulci film. If you're a fan of Lucio Fulci, I guess I can recommend it. If you've never heard of him, this is not the film to start with. Um, and this is one that I would say... You know, if you're not really, if, if you're, if you, if you're, if you don't like Lucio Fulci, this isn't, this isn't one that's going to change your mind about him either. So, really, I can only recommend this to, like, completionists who are like, I have to see every single Lucio Fulci film, or I have to see every single, like, major horror film from him, or splatter film from him. Because this one's definitely entertaining, but it's no, um, it's no House by the Cemetery. Or even Cat in the Brain, let me tell you that. Anyway, guys... I'm going to give this one probably a 2.5 out of 5, maybe 3 out of 5. I'm feeling a little generous today. But that is it for this one. Um, thanks for watching, guys. We made it this far. Uh, this is Biscuit Boo Horror Reviews. Signing off. Peace.